Yeah. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. Welcome to another virtual cooking class. We're here at the beach today with our very own sushi chef, uh, Chef Masa. Uh, chef Masa is going to um, uh, start off giving us a brief uh, introduction in the history of sushi. He will um, run us through how he cooks his uh, sushi rice. And then uh, you will be making a tempura today, miso no, no, soup. No, no tempura, yes, sir. The... Sanjigiri, sushi, and the rolls, and miso soup. Okay, so, and after that, we will have a uh, Q&A. Also, if you have uh, questions during the, uh, during the presentation, please type them in in the box uh, at the bottom of your screen, and we'll, uh, we'll forward them to Chef Masa. Chef Masa? Thank you very much. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the confusion. There is a uh, big misleading about the uh, notification. Uh, uh, many of you expected to cook with me tonight, but uh, we decided to just go academic and then I give you some instructions and shopping tips and uh, things like that. So after this class, with those information, you can please go ahead, go shopping, cook uh, miso soup, stuff like that, then give us a feedback. I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. So let's, uh, if we ready, uh, we're going to start with uh, sushi, sushi history of sushi. Uh, this is, uh, yeah. So I, you know, uh, over here, when you say sushi, you hear the word sushi, you may, you know, think of many different things, but uh, uh, here's, this was a opportunity for me as well to learn deeper about sushi. And I'm gonna share what I find out and then I'm gonna introduce how it, uh, how it created, invented. So if you flip to the second page, you see the first picture, the two fish with like a little, look like salt on it. It's called a nare zushi. It's a carp, it's a freshwater fish. So this is a considered very first type of uh, sushi. The, when rice was introduced to Japan, from Far East Asia, they imported this technique as well. So sushi is not like a Japanese uh, original. It was imported actually. <laughs> so they, uh, for the preservation of the fish, uh, we love, uh, Japanese people love fish. So we wanna eat and don't wanna waste. So the, we wanted to preserve. So this technique came in the, the fermented rice and the fish together, you can keep it longer time. So this is the beginning of sushi. It's called nare sushi. Nare is like to, nare is the word like a getting used to. So it's like a merging rice and fish together. So the first sushi, actually they enjoy only the fish part. The rice is just uh, the agent to, you know, uh, preserve the fish. So that's nare sushi. And the, the right-hand side, a uh, small picture, you see the, that's the very first document mentioned about sushi. It's 2000 years ago. It says uh, sushi was offered to the Lord. So this is, uh, we, we say, the origin the oldest time sushi. So as they started to enjoy this, uh, some people started to eat rice with the fish together. So that's kind of uh, start with the concept fish and rice together, I think. Uh, so as they started eating rice, they you know, pay attention to the quality of rice at the same time. And that's the second picture, the macro and uh, rice. It's uh, kind of cutting pieces. So then uh, the time goes to Muromachi period, 
13, that's the 14th century, 16th century. It's, uh, they started to enjoy the sushi before fish totally fermented. So it's like half raw, half fermented. It's called a nama nare. It's a semi-fermented sushi. So they, in a way, it takes longer time to let the rice ferment and the fish ferment. Probably they wanted to eat faster. <laughs> so that, that's the way they don't get sick, but they can enjoy, you know, uh, the sushi. And then it goes develop and next page, please. So we're going to Edo period. It's a, a 17th, uh, 19th century. So people uh, started to use vinegar rice, which is today, you know, you go to sushi bar, the rice mixed up with a vinegar, special vinegar. So that's uh, because fermenting rice takes longer time. And then we found out vinegar can substitute, you know, slow down the bacteria's activity. So vinegars to preserve the rice and then put it together, cured fish uh, vinegar together. So that's the beginning of uh, nigiri sushi. And there was a chef called Yohei. He thought about how this process too long. So he went to fish in the river. He got this joint by the river, and then he just filleted the fish, put the fish with the sushi rice together, and they started selling on the street. So the middle picture, the small joint like that, they, they, they are coming there. Sorry, the first top picture, the small, like a temporary joint that was a selling sushi on the street. And then right next to it, the guy carrying the jug on the shoulder. And then on the other hand, he had, he had a kettle. So that's a sushi, you know, selling on the street, delivering with a tea to offer with the sushi. So then, you know, uh, we, they develop, as, as they develop, they started in interior, like a facility to prepare those type of sushi. And on the bottom picture, it's a carrier with a hole with a two big jugs on hanging on each side. So that's uh, how they deliver the sushi. And it was seen very, like uh, 80s, 90s, there were people like that still uh, around in Japan. And then you have the carriage, the, uh, like a rickshaw to carry those things. Actually, those are the uh, vehicle when they go to fish market to get the fish as well. So uh, that's the origin of Nigiri sushi, the, today you, you picture, you know, think about, you know, rolls and maybe nigiri sushi. That's a big, um, big kind of sushi. But sushi, if you, if you, if you go next page, please. So this beautiful picture is, uh, you know, drawn, Chef Yohei's uh, sushi. This is the very first nigiri sushi, I'll say. So before that, they had a you know big jug and then rice and the fish. But now uh, you have a small, you know, the like fist. This is actually bigger than nigiri sushi today. It's a, like a fist size, the rice bowl with a slice of fish on top together. So some, some source says, um, they started selling this on the street. It's a, as a fast food, actually, like a hamburgers, McDonald's, like a, that kind of concept. The sushi started like a street food, fast food. 
And then um, some people say, started saying, uh, this is a little too big for to bite, uh, bite off. Can you cut in half? So, you know, many, many times sushi chefs uh, started to provide cutting half those big pieces. So, uh, believe it or not, I don't know, uh, that's a custom. If you order one of the sushi, you get two pieces. That's a kind of custom uh, from the origin. And then the bottom picture is like a more uh, modern time. We get the advent of the refrigeration. Thank you to technology. You, you get to enjoy more fish farther from the ocean, you know, you know, longer time. So as sushi origin and it goes develop on and on. And then I'm gonna introduce different kinds of sushi after this section. And you know, we the uh, start of sushi. Thank you very much. And then next page. Um want to talk about toro. I assume everybody know what toro is, yes? Toro is the uh, highest of content from tuna. Tuna mostly, mainly belly part. That means uh, toro, the word toro means to melt in your mouth, toro ke. That's invented around Taisho uh, period. But before it was, uh, the Chef Yohei's time, with no refrigeration, the main, main, main way to preserve the fish was to soak in the soy sauce. So the red meat on the upper part, the akami, they, they can last longer time. But because of oil content, soy sauce doesn't go with toro. It, it was called actually abu. Abu word coming from abura, which means oil. So abu, when sushi, sushi chef get the tuna, abu, cut off, throw it away. Can you, be, you, know, can you believe? <laughs> That's the part to discard. No good. <laughs> because no refrigeration, oil seep, seeping out, and then it, it doesn't last a long time. So the main people who enjoy abu was those people lived in Skid Row. They go to the garbage, find this piece, and they enjoy it. That's the story. And after refrigeration, you know, getting developed, people started eating this, you know, wonderful part. And then now it's most, I, I would say, one of the most expensive, you know, fish in the menu and that's beautiful so that's the story of toro uh, next page i want to introduce the history of sushi in u.s so sushi came to u.s around 1970s you see the picture on the bottom it's this is Mr. Kanai. He was a late, uh, he's a late uh, CEO of Mutual Trading, which uh, the company I use every day. <laughs> uh, they import the things from Japan, uh, you know, the utensils or the frozen products. He's a pioneer of Japanese uh, cuisine and culture you know, introduced to US. So there was a restaurant called Kawafuku and uh, it's a Japanese restaurant serving, you know, tempura, skiyaki, teriyaki. People don't like raw fish. So they just do those, you know, authentic cooked, food, cooked dishes. So Mr. Kanai talked to the owner, Mr. Nakajima. It took two months to convince him, and then he finally agreed to open a sushi bar in a part of his restaurant. That's a, I think, two-story two restaurant, and 
top top floor in the picture that's a sushi bar uh mr kanai brought sushi chef uh chef saito and his wife to walk this uh sushi bar it was a uh, two 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 people operation so chef saito cooking everything his wife you know serving you know taking order and then he made a fortune in like four years and then went back to Japan and started his own business. So those story, you know, inspired many sushi chefs in Japan to pursue the dream in US. So that's gonna generate expansion, um, not only little Tokyo area, but migrate, you know, expand to Santa Monica, ultimately entire US. So, First, the customers are only like immigrants, like Japanese people or second generation or businessmen to you know, visit US. But since uh, 1970s, the California made appearance in the sushi, sushi restaurants. Then American people started to try it's a, I would say California Road is a gateway for American people who was, you know, not really um, interested in Japanese traditional sushi at the time. So California Road is good. So I'm gonna go to the next page. So who made the California Road? There are <laughs> debates. Some people claim, oh, I made it, I, I created So before that, what is California? I, I, I'm sure you already know, but um, more commonly, it comes with uh, imitation crab or crab meat, the real crab, and then uh, avocado and cucumber. Um, most of the time it comes right on the outside. Many times with uh, smart, those, those orange rolls, smart fish egg or flying fish egg. So one chef, uh, his name is Chef Tojo. He's actually in, in uh, Vancouver, Canada. He, when he came to Canada in the 70s, he was having a hard time getting fresh fish. Also, people don't like the seaweed. And to hide the seaweed, he started putting the rice on the outside. That's his claim. And then many people, in his, uh, many clients among his guests was coming from Los Angeles. So that's how he named California Road. And then the other one said, Chef Machita, he, he's rooted in uh, Little Tokyo in the restaurant. So back then, it's around the same time, the tuna used to be a seasonal fish. It's not every, every time, all time fish. So when he couldn't get toro, he thought about uh, avocado to substitute the texture and then the flavor for the flavor, he used the crab. And then at the same time, he thought about many people scared of seaweed. Some people even peel the seaweed to eat the raw. So he thought about the same thing. He put putting the seaweed inside. And then, you know, to in his story, it, it took a little time to become the California role we know. And either way, to me, I think uh, both, or there are more, more chefs claiming I, met, I created a California world. It's uh, really, it took a real, real courage because I'm, here it's, right now it's California world. I think it's normal. Some people say, oh, I don't make California world. That's because uh, they uh, think about the tradition they respect those those old people 
but at the same time, I really uh, get encouraged myself, you know, working as a sushi chef in a different country, you have to really open up to the local people. So, you know, it's coming from their heart for people to, how, how can I, you know, introduce to them? How can I, you know, let them have the enjoyment? That's the, uh, I think, spirit behind the California roll. So the, who, who made the California roll is actually a mystery, but it's a big impact for the sushi industry in US. And it's, of course, we import it to Japan and they love it as well. Okay, so that's a story, a history part. And I hope you get the new information uh, about it. And if you go next page, um, so there are different kinds of sushi. So the first thing you see, nigiri sushi, it's a uh, most, I would say, basic uh, edomai, the Tokyo style sushi, slice of fish over the sushi rice, you know, put it together. The perfect uh, balance stays in, the, in your finger, breaks in your mouth. That's the best uh, form, I would say. I, I personally, uh, <laughs> that's the most little, little universe in your dish, I would say. So the different style of uh, nigiri, uh, the next one is gunkan maki. It's a bowel ship. It's a uh, full fish, like salmon roll, sea urchin, sushi chef, you know, having a hard time making nigiri. This is not the uh, staying together. So they made a seaweed wrapping around the sushi rice. So that's the uh, gunkamaki. And the next one is temari sushi. It's a little handball style, very similar to nigiri sushi, but uh, this one, I'm, I'm gonna teach you how to make it at home. So you can try the temari sushi. Temari means handball, it's a small ball. And next one is, uh, of course, that's the most famous style in US, I guess, a maki sushi. Maki sushi means a rolls. If you think about sushi, many people think about rolls. Like I mentioned, California roll, spicy tuna roll, probably this uh, most common style. And there's a different size, skinny, medium to the big. And then, more importantly, there's an inside out roll, which is called uramaki. And then the other one is hand rolls, right? The temaki sushi. It's the same concept, but it's like a, instead of cutting bite size, you get the one entire roll in your hand. You get to monopolize, monopolize the one roll by yourself, not sharing. And um, next page, please. So the, there's a different kind of sushi, chirashi sushi, kaisen don. Those are the sushi rice uh, on the bowl, and then different fish, the scallop or the sashimi on the over the sushi rice. That's, and then we have a. Uh, the, those kind of sushi in the green, it's it's a uh, it's actually Kansai style. The Osaka today is Osaka area. That's a West Side style. They like to use a box, the mold, and put the rice in the mold, fish, and then press it. So those uh, different styles of sushi. And the last one is a uh, Inari sushi. It's very unique uh, history on this one, but uh, I, I, I'm gonna uh, just uh, skip this subject, but uh, this is the kind of uh, sushi you can find. There are more different varieties. And that's, uh, I think, a very common style, uh, pretty much I covered. And you can, uh, you can ask questions uh, on your screen. Um, the next uh, page, 
this is I just want to mention this for this class I use this uh, books and then you know internet as well. But these books were my like a uh, you know Bible like a uh, textbook. It's been with me almost twenty years. So it's a very old information, but still useful. And many pictures coming from this, these books. And next, uh, I'm going to talk about a little, a little bit with, about the sushi rice. Next, uh, please. So yes. Uh, I, I was mostly talking about fish, but when I say sushi, I think uh, sushi rice uh, is the most important ingredient. When rice is not right, you don't uh, taste delicious sushi. On the other hand, rice is perfect. You may get away with a, you know, medical fish, but you still enjoy it. I try to, you know, balance both quality, but the rice is the most important ingredient. And as in my experience, there are many different variety of rice in Japan. But I say this uh, variety called Koshihikari is the best. And then you see on the picture, the bottom left is the bag of the rice I use. It's called Yuki Tsubaki. Uh, next page, please. Yeah, we have some questions as well. You have a question? Yeah, uh, Michael Callahan is asking, is it true that salmon sushi wasn't used in Japan until the late 90s? Okay, I'm gonna quickly answer the question. In, in in the old days, yes, the the sushi started freshwater fish, but the freshwater fish has a problem to use in the Edo period. The vinegar uh, cured with salt, it's a uh, bacteria. So naturally, you know, we use raw consumption fish from ocean. So freshwater fish is typically we consider for grill or braise for, you know, cooking through it. So salmon falls, actually it's a unique species. They hatch, you know, the, they were born on the upstream. In the younger age, go downstream to the, and then, you know, you enjoy the ocean cruising and go back to the, <laughs> same river. I don't know why they, they have a homing system and go back to the same river, same spot they were born to, you know, breed uh, children, the eggs. So salmon was actually considered as a freshwater fish. It has a lot of parasite. So it's normal to uh, eat raw in Japan. But after we came to US, the sushi came to US actually. The chef Tojo, I, I mentioned, actually he the, <laughs> he proclaimed another thing is actually he's the first person to use the smoked salmon in sushi. So smoked salmon is not quite cooked, but raw, but that's you know, like a grab rat, like a, you cured it. So and then smoke it. So that's the beginning, I believe, to start the, to use the salmon as consumption in sushi. And then later on, uh, some chefs um, found out we could el eliminate those parasites by freezing hard instead of cooking. So instead of raising the temperature, lowering the temperature extreme so they can stop the activity of parasite and then when it's defrosted you can eat raw safely so that's that's what we do and that's true and that's now you know japanese people love the salmon belly as well so 
They today is salmon is on the sushi board in Japan. So that's that's very correct. So it was originally in Japan. Masa. Um, yes. Kevin Cohen is asking nata fermented soybean. Nato, yes. Yeah, was that what fermented sushi tasted like before refrigeration? I would say nato is a different uh, culture. It's a different yeast and it's very unique. I think soybean, you know, the fermentation, but the sushi rice fermentation, I think it, I, I would imagine it's more closer to like blue cheese kind of strong odor, strong flavor. Once you learn in German, you crave for it, kind of, <laughs> you know. So natto is a little different. Is that good? Yes? Okay. okay, so for the rice, I go back to Yuki Tsubaki. I, I'm so fortunate to encounter this you know, brand because of Jonathan Club. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> This uh, rice is awarded, you know, gold like four or five consecutive years. And it's very specific location. It's very ideal to uh, grow rice in many aspects. Um, most of the rice coming from this region is really, really exceptional. But among even among those, this uh, brand has taken a lot of you know attention, a lot of details. It's more expensive, but it's so great. I eat this rice and I cannot go back to something else. So it and you know I next page please um bring up different uh, ingredients. Water is important of course I want to talk about a little bit about vinegar. I, the vinegar I originally used is called uh, akazu. It's a red vinegar, aged rice vinegar. It's a, like an amber, dark amber color vinegar. That's the original vinegar. You, if you go to some restaurant, they use akazu, then rice is real, really like a brown, dark color. I like that flavor to the cured fish, but you know, here you, many people like to enjoy the rolls, like a, a different fish. So I blend the white vinegar, the rice vinegar, and then the red vinegar together. So that's my uh, sushi rice vinegar, in, in case uh, you didn't know. Um, and I use for the charcoal for the cooking as well. And then the last thing on the bottom, this is most important to me. This is, uh, I cannot lack this uh, ingredient. It's, a, it's love. If, if I love this rice, rice comes out so delicious. <laughs> so I, next page, you can see the procedure, how to make uh, sushi rice. But I know it's, it's not like a, very household uh, oriented direction. Uh, the, the, we're gonna try, you're gonna, when you're gonna, when you try, um, you have this, uh, can you talk to me? Yes, sure. So I created this uh, shopping list. Many people are asking for it and then, I'm sorry, it took me some time to provide it for you. And the very last page, you see the vinegar is uh, from Mitsukan. It's ready to make sushi rice. So it's awesome. Uh, I think I recommend this to use for your household. So this concludes the first part of this uh, class. And then we're going to take a few minutes break and then come back to the, you know, the cooking part. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. Any questions? Am I good on time? Yes.
Well, welcome back. Thank you. So I got the, another question. Uh, Chad's going to ask me right now. So um, Peter Bucket says, where in LA is the best fish source? <laughs> it's a very uh, broad question, I would say. Uh, it, it depends on what kind of fish you're looking for. It could be, you know, depends on, for me, like uh, industry use, so I get the bigger size of fish. So I go to the fish market or, you know, not right now, but I have a source to uh, the fish market in Japan. So I order directly to the Toyosu market fish company. But um, in public, mm, it, 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 the, on the... On the list, there's a shopping location on the page five. I introduced three locations, Nishita Market, Marukai, Mitsuwa Market. Those are the places you would find great fish for sashimi grade. So as after this class, maybe you're gonna go shopping or maybe this week, anytime for buying meat or soup or some rice. And unfortunately, Yuki Tsubaki is not available in the market, probably on Amazon right now. But uh, um, so at the time, you can check out the fish corner, the fresh fish area. So, you, and and uh, another thing is uh, probably many Korean, you know, owned operated market has a uh, fresh fish as well. Um, that, that is a good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so um, I just want to mention first, uh, you know, it's a sensitive time right now, but I want to make sure I use bare hands, no gloves, because this is my tool instrument to measure or, or identify or, you know, if something wrong, that's my uh, tool to uh, build my sushi. And even before this pandemic, if you're working in a culinary, you would know uh, hand washing 20 seconds is everybody know, especially my department, uh, sushi has to wash hands more often. And this uh, hand water with ice I use for, you know, uh, cooling down my hands. So temperatures um, gets, don't, don't get too high. At the same time, uh, this helps, uh, you know, controlling the rice. You, it, it used to be, you know, old time sushi chef used to be used vinegar in here even so that you even sanitize your fingers and then I, I used to have like a yellow finger <laughs> but now uh, I use uh, ice water but uh, so I hope it, it doesn't offend anybody uh, that's how I work and then I hope you you understand that thank you very much so I use the bare hand okay so I'm cutting the fish just a I wouldn't expect you to uh, be able to fillet those fish by watching this video, but uh, if you could get some sense of uh, the process, how it goes, and um, I want to show a little tip when you buy the fish. So this is a uh, black sea bream. So when you have the whole fish, you want to check the eyes. It's not too cloudy. If it's uh, too white, you wouldn't want to choose. If, if you get a chance to look at in here, the gills, it should be very red. And then you touch the meat. It's getting soft or firm. When it's firmer, it means less time 
after the you know passing. So it's fresher. Uh, uh, the the longer it goes, and then it gets softer and softer. So that's kind of, that's a point you want to check before you pick the your dinner. And I'm gonna go this way. There's a hole in here. That's where you start cutting all the way to the um, to the jaw, and then you would cut the gills out. You cut off the color from the jaw, and then go to the other side. Same thing, and then you could open up and then pull out the guts and the gills at the same time. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it right here. It's going to be bloody. <laughs> so after you take off the guts, discard, then gently uh, wash the bloodline. I use uh, actually toothpaste, uh, I mean, <laughs> not toothpaste, tooth toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> no toothpaste. Toothbrush to uh, clean up the bloodline. It, it works very well. Don't use toothpaste. <laughs> so, so this is a this is a fish uh, cleaned up already. So just a per procedure. Um, I I would have its preference either either side you can start, but I like always see the fish on the left hand side head. Thank you very much. And then I'm gonna go start cutting off the head. Um, like this. And then you see here's a spine and the back bone in the middle. So this is this line, along with this line, you want to go filleting so you can preserve as much meat as possible. So I'm gonna go this side. If I go like this, you don't see nothing. So <laughs> this is usually how I cut. I cut for you this side. So along with the back fin, you go make a sweet, just a cut the skin. Usually skin is tougher. That's one step and then you go along with this bone, right? And then this finger is very important. This is gonna detect each uh, joint of the spine touching the tip of the knife. If you don't feel it, maybe you can, you're cutting a uh, wrong spot. If you, the audio pick up the sound, you hear the click, 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 as I the my knife tip touches through the spines, the joint. So that's a spot you want to cut. So you, you cut in the skin first. This side, almost same, but you have to go from the tail, do invisible, at the, the beginning it's hard. And then now, you have the ribs right here. Ribs you have to cut through, but you, you don't you don't want to cut through too much. This is a spine. You just want to cut a little bit over, so you don't damage the back side of the meat, the flesh. So you go cut the ribs, and then. It's connected in the middle bone to the flesh. So from the tail, you uh, insert the knife and then flip the other side, holding the tail, and then you go all the way to cut the middle bone. So it's separate now. And then you get the fillet. And then the other side, same thing, but uh, this time a little bit 
easier because it's flat on the side. So you go same procedure almost and cut it through. And then this is a technique called uh, Sanmai Oroshi, three sheets, uh, separated in three sheets, like a one, two, three flat things. So this is the way you fillet. And you can leave the bones if you grill or braise, and then when you eat, remove the bone as well. But the sushi, probably you don't want to do it. <laughs> so we need to remove the bone before we build the nigiri or sashimi. So take the color off. And get the rib, ribs. You go back, back cutting, back side cutting. And then go along with the ribs as much uh, as uh, try not to cut, cut in the flesh. So you just remove the ribs and preserve the flesh right here. If you see, uh, I don't know if you can see here, if it's good, uh, you see the dips on the each ribs. You leave the flesh on the on your dinner. <laughs> so there, are, there are some bones here in the middle. If you have tweezer, you can twist. Oh, this is rib. I missed one rib. <laughs> You can twist one by one gently, or you can just uh, cut down to uh, quarter sections. So you can re cut off all the bone line one time. So this is how you cut this fish, the Sanmai Oroshi. And the other thing, this is called uh, Kohada. One of my favorite fish. This is one of the traditional sushi fish. Uh, cured with sea salt and vinegar. Make it very nice nigiri sushi. This is a very, if you enjoy this fish, you may say, oh, I, I like sushi. No kidding. <laughs> you, you enjoy California roll, you like sushi as well. But this is uh, towards the more traditional side. So this fish has a little scales. You go with a knife, you take off the scale like this, and then you take the head off, and then the fins, and then the belly, you cut off the belly. And then again, you clean up. This is a very delicate uh, fish. So if you ever try to fillet this, you have to be very gentle. Masa, uh, try to be very gentle. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and this one is uh, called uh, Kannon Biraki. Uh, it's a little complicated. So, Kannon is a Buddhist uh, idol. So, it, it's going the outer. So, outer has a door. It goes close and open. And Kannon Biraki uh, is like a, when you, after you fillet the fish, it looks like a door opening and closing. That's the uh, name. So again, you want to go along with this bone, but this, this you go from the belly side, not from the back. So you go, you see the knife going 
from the belly and then right above the spine you go to the back but you, you don't want to penetrate the knife on the back so you leave them together on the back open up the flesh and then now you remove the spine and then you get this uh this many people just throw it away but i like this part i dry try serve it for you and remove the ribs okay okay so now it's filleted canon miraculous so it goes close yes and then open so this is a two different way of uh breaking down the fish and now we're going to i mean i'm going to make some sushi show you how to eat sushi a little bit and then introduce you some techniques you can do at home as well okay is it fun now <laughs> are you having fun hopefully keep it in the back thank you very much and then this is done as well I, I, I need to wash my hand quick and come back. Sorry. sanitizing okay uh so the time is pushing i'm sorry i delayed a little bit i was gonna show a little uh nigiri sushi but uh, i want to share what you can do at home it's uh one of those uh, kind of sushi uh temari sushi okay you need uh plastic wrap so you put it put the plastic wrap on the cutting board um probably many people like salmon it's a slice of salmon in the center and if you like you can put a little bit wasabi and little uh rice this could be a uh, little bigger than uh, regular nigiri. This temari sushi style, little bigger. About, I would say, 25 grams. So now you have the whole component on the plastic wrap. You pick up the corners together. And then you start squeezing make no room or uh, leave no room in the inside make a bowl so now you have a oh, whoa, whoa moving moving so 
sorry. <laughs> Still moving. Um, you open up the plastic and you have the sushi. So this maybe you can buy some fish at the store and uh, rice, make a sushi rice, and then you can try making it at home. I have a uh, sea bream. I put a little wasabi and shiso leaf. And again, 25 grams in the center. Put it together. Squeeze. Open. You have your sushi. Temari sushi. I make one more and then I move to a hand roll. Michelle <laughs> Kerr says you're doing a great job and you're loving this. Thank you very much. So this, you know, usually I make nigiri sushi, just make my hand and make a mold in my hand. But this one, it doesn't need uh, too much of technique, but you can still enjoy sushi at home, nigiri sushi, the type of nigiri sushi. Just squeeze, not too, not too strong, make a sphere. Yes. And don't forget, what, do you know what? Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. You, you, you forget to put your love in your sushi, it may taste okay. So please, when you create it, put some uh, love to it. Stephen Petty says marvelous, and the Brindleys are having oh, so you. much fun. Thank you, Masa. Okay, quickly, thank you very much. So I want to, I want you to take it away home, even though you are at home. Uh, you make handle. So when you take out the seaweed, you picture two squares, okay? And the first square to your side, you draw an imaginary diagonal line from your, if you're a right-hand person, I, I am right-handed. So from left-hand corner to the other side. Oh, it, it's on your, it's on the paper, if you don't see the diagram. And you get the, this is, uh, I wait, uh, oh, it's hard to see. <laughs> 30, 30 gram rice, it's all same amount. So you go this diagonal line and you don't want to press the rice, just put the lab. And sprinkle some sesame seeds, okay? And this is vegetable, it's about 30 grams. You don't want to exceed 40 grams. It's going to be too much. It's doable, but maybe not enjoyable. Um, so you're going to go shiso leaf. Stuff like that. So along with this uh, diagonal line, you line up your ingredients. Now, the other side, hand side, uh, corner. This corner goes to the center of the other side of the square. So it's right in the center of CV. It's hard to see, I know. But uh, if you go put the corner right in the center, you want to tuck it in this way, okay? And then easy. If you have the bamboo roller, it's gonna help. And then, you want to take a piece of uh, rice to this corner right here. So it's gonna seal the handle tight. So this is how you make handles. <laughs> and 
you know, we are sushi chefs don't really use the board, but if many ingredients you want to put, it's easier to use a bamboo roller. If you have just a one or two ingredients, such as many people favorite, what is this? Avocado, okay, avocado, <laughs> and uh, maybe cucumber. Some kids like it. You can have avocado cut off first, ready to use. Yes. And here. Um, easier way, same, same amount of rice, 30 grams, but this time you go straight, okay? Yes, again, don't press too hard, just put it, like uh, you, you put your baby on the chair, so cucumber, Avocado and pick up, put it inside. You 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 may not need to use this either, but this one just straight. I suggest uh, our seaweed is very uh, high end, crispy, but some seaweed sometimes chewy. I also have a question from Kevin Cohen. He says, when I make a roll, by the time it's ready, the seaweed is already soft. What is he doing wrong? So, okay. When seaweed, it depends on the seaweed quality, just I mentioned as well. Some seaweed uh, degrade very fast, while the other good seaweed stays longer time crispy. Um, the the easiest, easiest uh, measure is the uh, price. You see the more expensive seaweed, it will be probably a better quality. But if you want to identify, you see, uh, pick up the seaweed and then look at the light. You see the density and the size of each uh, seaweed. If it's rough, not consistent, not even, it's a lower grade. Good one is uh, smaller, and then it's very even. And then the color as well, the shiny part, and then the rough part, you have two sides. And the, the many other factors, but I, I think, uh, uh, and again, uh, when you touch the rice, your hand may be not cold enough. So you, your hand is warm, pick up the rice, oh, very sticky, and then taking time, try to put the rice, oh, I need to get rid of this rice. Uh, then by the time you're ready to put the stuffing, it's taking a uh, longer time. So that's maybe what, what could happen. Uh, does it answer the question? Stephanie Cliff says, this is wonderful. Thank you for teaching us and making it fun. Yes. And John Gorman says, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this is a sano I weighed 30 gram in advance. So in sushi chefs usually hold either this way or this way. You have the hand like this. I would hold uh, this way. And then same thing, you put diagonal in your hand. And then stuffing. Okay. And this corner goes in the same spot. And then just roll it over. And then you have the Enjoy the handle. Okay, so this is uh, for today. And I have miso soup, yes. <laughs> so miso soup direction. I really recommend 
this uh, dashi, but this is only available at the Nijia market on Sotel. Even if it's the same Nijia market, other location they don't have it. This uh, has a wonderful like artisan uh, job concentrated in this pack. So I usually take dashi. When I usually take dashi, I use from scratch the kombu, the bonito flake. Yes, uh, that is great as well. But for your household, this will be much better result you can get. So uh, I really recommend It's a little bit pricey, but this is very tasty. And the, the secret uh, is you can use this pack as dashi to take dashi. And then actually you can season other dishes as well. You open the bag and season as well. So this is a great product. And then you have a, this is a dry sea, seaweed wakame for miso soup. I already rehydrated mix uh, wakame. And I just want to show this. So you have a, no, I cannot show. <laughs> Tofu, scallion, and yeah, I have Tokyo Negi. This is a green onion from Japan species, grown, I think, in Oxnard. It has a, a lot of flavor, sweeter. It's a little pricey, but recommended. This is Bordakuru. It's another thing you can uh, add to your miso soup. It, has a, it gives a little nice flavor. When you use this, I want to uh, mention uh, do not peel the skin, wash, and then use the back of your knife to uh, remove those hairs and preserve the skin as much as possible. It's a, uh, I forgot the uh, nutrition, but it's a good nutrition around the skin and good, good benefit as well as a taste. So you want to preserve the skin. And when you cut this guy, um, easier way is a bias cut rotating. Uh, I'll cut the tip first, and then you rotate the cut surface on top, and then you slice one, two, three, four, maybe five, and then rotate. Slice and rotate. It's gonna give you similar size of the slices. Easier way, not too big. If you 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 could also, of course, cut straight, square, then go slicing as well, just like daikon radish. But this is skinny and long root, I think this is much practical and easier way to uh, cut it. So, so somebody's saying, where did you where did you say to buy the packet for the miso soup? Uh, it's on the list. Uh, the first one. Uh, the page five. Oh, it says a uh, West LA location, Nijia market. But you may also find it online, Amazon or different vendors. John Lima was asking, were you born in Japan and where did you receive your training? Okay, my personal uh, training, I, am born, uh, I was born in Japan, yes. A um, little bit of story, when I was in Japan, I didn't eat sushi. I didn't like fish. <laughs> uh, it's a trauma when I was a uh, child. Uh, I was eating the grilled fish and then a tiny bone stuck on my throat. Ever since I rejected to uh, <laughs> eat fish. 
until the age of like 22, 23. I came to US at the age of 25. And I was looking for a job in the restaurant. And then the most job was at the sushi bar. It was not my, <laughs> I didn't like sushi. So I, I, it wasn't my ideal, but for survival, I took the job. But ever since, you know, when I was in Japan, I used to work in a restaurant. I loved uh, cooking part back of the house, um, as well as front of the house, uh, taking care of guests, bringing food, serving drinks. Um, but uh, in the restaurant, it's impossible to do the same job front of the house and back of the house at the same time. After I accepted the job as a sushi you know, apprentice, immediately I fell in love because I'm cooking for the guests right, right in front of me. I can interact. I can take care of them. So I could do both at the same time. So that was my ideal job. The only problem was I didn't like fish. <laughs> but uh, there's a moment, you know, I have to, you know, know, study about what I serve, of course. So little by little, I started to, you know, eat different fish. Now, uh, the fish is number one for me. <laughs> So that's what I do. My passion, love, everything. Thank you very much. So uh, lastly, when you take dashi, um, oh, so I'm gonna show daikon, daikon root, you cut and then peel, or you can peel first and then cut. Then I'll say, uh, maybe this one. So you're gonna cut in half inches thickness maybe. And then you can go one by one or you can pile up and make the, uh, what do you say, a peg or yeah, slices. So this, when you take dashi, after taking dashi, um, you can put this to cook it down. So uh, it's hard to see, yes. <laughs> Did I have the label? I have a label, sorry. So, let me. I don't... In the meantime, somebody's asking, yes. Chris Corral's asking, what sauces do you like to make or serve for sushi, especially spicy options? Okay, uh, spicy could be uh, what I use, uh, of course, uh, spicy mayo is a Japanese chili paste with mayonnaise mainly, and as well as a sesame chili oil. If you don't like mayonnaise, you can combine soy sauce sesame chili oil. And then the other option is uh, use the kosher, citrus pepper. This is a great product. I use it all the time for uh, sea bream. And it's a, user is a Japanese citrus, like a, look like lemon, but a lot of intense flavor. And this one is a user's skin after they take the juice the use the skin and then a Japanese pepper uh, mashed like a mince. This is a great product as well to make it spicy. Okay, so you take dashi and then take the bag out and then you put the roots. Um, oh, yeah, that becomes a little transparent and that's ready. And then I would use uh, this special strainer to mix in a uh, miso. So you can just put it in there 
in the pot as well. But uh, you want to make sure uh, all, all miso gets dissolved. So this is the best way you hello you use a strainer and miso inside and then stir it in the in the dashi until it gets dissolved everything completely you get like this kind of debris uh in the in the middle you can go uh mix to make it dissolve everything and then the portion of miso you want to use i think everybody has different preferences i would suggest start with a less amount taste if you like a little bit more saltier then you add more if it came out too salty simply you can just add a little water so then you have the tofu scallion uh wakame i suggest you could put all these in the soup as well but i just suggest these you prepare it on your bowl and then pour it over. So it's a, it, it preserves the freshness, the scallions and then the seaweed. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. Any questions, uh, if uh, you come up after the class, you can email to me as well. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much, Chef, Chef Andreas, uh, anything to add? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, next time uh, we're cooking together. But uh, there's an instruction of the uh, tempura at home as well, as well as the handle uh, I explained uh, right here. You can go over again. So this, I, I hope this helps. And if you do go shopping, cooking, I'll be uh, I'll be happy to hear how it comes out, and I appreciate it. And thank you very much, and thank you for staying longer time. And I hope I see you next time. I'm cooking together. Thank you. Arigato. <laughs>